Welcome to this two-part yoga practice for the SI joint, where we'll first begin by warming up and stabilizing the joint, and then find some relief through deep, gentle stretches. My name is Joelle, and you can join me by sitting towards the back of your mat with the legs extended out in front. They can be bent or straight, and we'll start to walk ourselves forward. So shuffling one side of your pelvis and then the other towards the front of your mat, taking little steps, and then backing it up. So we're going to go forwards and back two times. Take things at your own pace. Acknowledge that one direction may be a little bit more challenging than the other. This is a great stabilization exercise for this very important joint that really needs to be strong enough to support the weight of the entire upper body. And take your time finishing up that second little journey on your mat. You can take a deep breath, roll the shoulders back. And when you're ready, we'll move on transitioning through an all fours position, widening the fingers, tucking the toes and lifting the hips up and back into downward facing dog. And from here, you can take a few pedals of the legs, bending and straightening. Again, shifting that pelvis ever so slightly from side to side. That joint between the sacrum and the bones of the pelvis, that is our sacroiliac joint, our focus for today. And then you can start to take little steps forwards, bringing the feet in the direction of the hands. Then the knees generously catch hold of opposite elbows and gently rock yourself from side to side. Finding a bit of a release in the lower back, SI joint inflammation closely linked to lower back pain. So great areas to be working on today. And then begin to widen your feet, turn your toes outwards. We'll lower down into a squat. Now you could have your heels down and the palms in prayer in front of the heart. You could also have your fingertips on the mat in front of you and lift up through the heel. Find a place that works for you to hold for just one more breath. And then step yourself back into a plank pose, pressing the heels back or lowering the knees. We'll lower ourselves all the way down to the mat. Untuck the toes if they were tucked. And then roll yourself to one side slightly and the other to place the palms of your hands on your hips. So basically grabbing hold of your own hip bones as you squeeze the legs together and lift them off of the mat. Now they probably won't go very high. Again, this is a strengthening and stabilization exercise. Hold it here, keep squeezing the legs together. Squeeze your glutes. And then lower down, really nicely done. You can free up your hands, flip yourself over onto your back, lowering all the way down, and then bringing the soles of the feet together for butterfly, knees out wide. Once again, the hands can rest on top of your hip bones. Breathing in and out. One more breath here. And as you breathe it out, you can bring the knees in towards the heart, one hand on each knee, either holding here or taking a happy baby, catching hold of the insides of the feet or the big toes, and then bending the knees in the direction of the armpits. So choose your version. We will come back to this in our deep stretch section. We're just getting the body nice and warm, letting it know which area we're truly targeting in today's practice. And you can let that go. Bring the soles of the feet back to the mat. Bring them towards the outside of your mat and knock the knees in together. 
as you gently rub the inner knees back and forth. So just a very small movement here. You could place your hands back on your hip points, really feeling them moving up and down ever so slightly. Noticing the work of that pelvic area. And then bringing yourself to stillness, rolling over to one side, pressing back to find a comfortable seat. So we take note of how the body is feeling, maybe switching the cross of your legs if that's how you were seated. Closing the eyes for just a moment to thank yourself for warming up properly. As we now take our practice out into the sunshine, for some deep stretches. So we'll roll ourselves back onto our back, really lowering down slowly. And we'll find that stretch we had a moment ago, bringing the knees in towards your chest and then widening them. So one hand gently holding each knee. The eyes can stay closed here or softly open. Relax through your feet. And let the weight of the arms ever so slightly weigh the legs down. So we are not pulling, we are finding a space where the body can comfortably remain for about a minute and a half here. We'll be holding these deep stretches a little bit longer, giving the body time to release. And in these longer stretches, I like to give you some time to really experience your own practice and settle in. So I'll do my best to leave some silence here. Stay with your pose and stay with your breath. And you can slowly bring the knees back together. Place the soles of both feet down on the mat. Widen the feet towards the outer edges of the mat. And again, you can bring the knees together and rub the inner knees ever so slightly back and forth. Maybe you're already noticing a little bit more freedom, a little bit more release. Now keep the sole of the left foot down on the mat and cross your right knee over the left. We're coming towards my very favorite SI joint stretch. So lifting both knees towards your chest, still crossed. Interlace your fingers over your right knee. So that is your lower knee right now, the knee that is on top of the other. Traditionally, this stretch is done holding the top knee, but I really find that weighing down that knee that is closer to the body can provide a little bit more of a release in the lower back and SI joint area. And that might be something that you recognize in your own body as we stay here. Finding a place that will really work for you as we hold this pose.
Wonderfully done. You can slowly let go of the knees, uncross them, bring the soles of the feet back down towards the mat, squeeze the glutes, and just lift your hips up and down a few times, tucking the tailbone, and then setting the glutes back down, just a nice way to release from that longer hold. Another good opportunity to notice how we're feeling. And for the second side, you can cross left knee over right now. And then bring the knees in towards the heart. Perhaps holding onto your top knee, or as we've just done, you might appreciate the difference in holding the bottom knee, which is now our left knee. Again, just letting the weight of the arms, perhaps over time, bring that knee a little bit closer in, not forcing, not pulling, allowing this posture to be whatever it needs to be for you here and now. Gently releasing, bringing one foot and then the other back to your mat. A few more times, we'll squeeze the glutes and lift the hips just two or three inches. They don't need to go very far. This is not a full bridge pose. It's just a way to release. And then rolling yourself over to one side, lifting yourself over onto your stomach, releasing your forehead to the back of the hands, making a little pillow with both hands together. And we'll keep the right leg extended behind us as we bend the left knee and bring that knee out towards the side. So your left knee is roughly in line with your hip. Again, you can keep that right leg extended, or you could bend it and perhaps catch hold of your right foot with your left hand. Personally, I like to turn my head to the side, so towards the left, facing that knee that is out towards the side as well. But this is another posture where you might need to Shift around a little bit to find what works for you. And lucky for us, we've got the time to do so with these longer stretches. If you had hold of that back foot, you can slowly release it. Re-straighten that left leg. Press yourself up into a sphinx pose, resting on your forearms. And just kind of give your hips a little bit of a shake. Just some small movements here. You can always widen the legs a little bit further apart. 
Holding our Sphinx pose, let the shoulders slide down your back. If you're feeling some tightness in the lower back, this is a great place to maybe walk your elbows a little bit further forward or widen the legs. and release. Make that little pillow again with the back of your hands and cock your right knee out towards the side now. Again, roughly in line with your hip. Turn your head towards the right. Choose whether that left leg will stay extended or perhaps the right hand will reach back to grab the left foot. Because this is a somewhat complex posture, it might be a pretty different experience on the second side. Gently release your back foot if you were holding it. Re-extend that right leg behind you. Returning briefly towards Sphinx pose. You can have the palms of your hands flat or maybe bring them together. And then release as we press ourselves towards all fours, and then sitting back towards your heels for child's pose. I suggest widening the knees here, with the big toes touching or close to one another. And if the forehead doesn't quite reach down, you could once again form that little pillow with the back of your hand. Really nice. We can lift ourselves back up through all fours. Take a seat with the hands supporting you behind you so that we can windshield the knees from side to side. So our knees are roughly at 90 degrees. This is not an exact science. Finding some movement. And then the next time the knees are over towards the right, we'll stay here. And this is called deer pose. For many of us, it might be more comfortable to slide a cushion or a yoga block underneath the glutes. And you can also shift around the position of the hands to again find your level of comfort for today.
We can walk the upper body back into an upright position. Take those windshield wipers again. Side to side, no rush. Once your knees have made their way over towards the left, second side for our deer pose. Shifting the hands as necessary, adding or removing any props under your seat. And breathe. And let's release, coming on out of this pose, a few final windshield wipers, just to let that go, and then let both knees fall open, so falling away from one another, the hands are still supporting us behind the body, think about bringing the shoulder blades together as the heart lifts. And then reverse those legs. So the feet are out wide, the knees knock in together. Take a deep breath in. And open the mouth to sigh it out. <sighs> Let's make our way into a comfortable cross-legged seat as we sweep the arms up overhead and exhale the hands in front of your heart. Beautifully done. I do hope you enjoyed this practice. If you'd like to continue practicing together, please do subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I'll leave a link on screen in case you're looking for more practices to relieve your lower back. Have a beautiful day.